Leonardo, for one, um, spent a fair amount of time dissecting human cadavers because he wanted to know how the various bones related to one each other and how the muscles related to the bones. So he wanted to have a realistic understanding of the human anatomy because he was depicting real life people sitting, gesturing, walking, and he wanted to get this as absolutely correct as possible. So in order to understand how the body functions, we need to know something about the anatomy of the body. It's sort of obvious. The more we want to depict the mind, the more it helps to understand the mind. And one way to understand the mind is to understanding the brain. So it is conceivable that as we get deeper and deeper insights into the mind, artists will get ideas about how combinations of stimuli affect, for example, emotional states that will allow them to depict those emotional states better. But in addition, we're beginning to get, in very, very primitive terms, some insights into the nature of creativity. Uh, Hewling Jackson, the great neurologist in the 19th century, thought uh, that the left hemisphere is involved in language. We know this is true. And the left hemisphere is primarily involved in logical processes, calculation, mathematics, rational thinking. The right hemisphere, he thought, is more involved in musicality, which is true. The sing-song in my language comes from the right hemisphere. The grammar and the articulation comes from my left hemisphere. Okay? So he thought that the right hemisphere is more involved in musicality, in you know, synthesis, putting things together, and in aspects of creativity. Uh, and he felt that the two hemispheres inhibit one another. So if you have lesions of the left hemisphere that removes the inhibitory constraint on the right hemisphere and frees up certain processes, and he found that certain kids that developed later in life, let's say in their teens, um, an aphasia, a language difficulty, it freed up in them a musicality which they didn't have before. People have returned to that more recently in the analysis of a dementia called frontotemporal dementia. Frontotemporal dementia is a dementia somewhat similar to Alzheimer's disease, actually begins earlier, um, that primarily affects the temporal lobe of the brain and the frontal lobe of the brain. If it's only expressed on the left side, people with frontotemporal demen dementia begin to show creativity that they've never shown before. So if you were painted before, you might start, if you develop frontotemporal dementia on the left side, to use colors that you've never used before, to try forms that you've never used before. Uh, if you um, never painted before, you might take up painting for the first time. So this is really quite unusual. There are also a group of people who've studied aspects of creativity. I can give you a problem that can be solved in one of two ways. Systematically working your way through it, or putting it together. Take a guess, an aha phenomenon. And they found that when people do it in a sort of creative way, an aha phenomenon, there's a particular area in the right side of the brain that lights up. And they show this not only with imaging, but also with electrophysiological recording. So this is really quite interesting. There are a number of sort of indirect, not the most compelling evidence in the world. The aha phenomenon is well documented, but it's only a component of creativity. Number of suggestions. There are aspects of the right hemisphere that might be involved in creativity. But look, as we have been saying all along, we're at a very early stage in understanding higher mental processes. So it's amazing we know anything about creativity. But this is certainly, we're heading into an era in which one can really get very, very good insights into it. And the kinds of situations that lead to increased creativity. You know, is groupthink productive? Does it lead to great, greater creativity or does it I inhibit individual creativity? Lots of these questions are being explored, both from a social psychological and from a biological point of view.